In this lesson, we're going to cover the most common letters that are used in most of the basic words in Thai. Consonants are the building blocks of Thai words. So let's cover the most important consonants before getting on to learn any of the vowels. Now before we start, it's important to keep in mind that every consonant has a sex. A consonant can be a girl letter, a boy letter, or a ladyboy letter. The sex of the letter does not change the sound in any way. What it does do is affect the tone of the word. And we won't cover the tones until towards the end of the course. It's important to keep in mind the sex of the letter for when we come to deal with the tones later on. But don't worry about trying to remember the sex, because in the rapid method, you will automatically know what the sex is without thinking about it. Okay, let's start with the first letter. This letter is the U-boat captain. It looks like a U, but it is actually the B sound, as in U-boat. You can see over here is the head of the captain as he's looking around for enemy ships. And the sex of this letter happens to be a male, because most U-boat captains are males. Now the captain decides to send out a spy balloon to watch out for enemy ships. And the sound of this letter is the B inside the word spy. The way to practice saying this sound correctly is to say an S followed by a P and then gradually remove the S but still keep the shape of your mouth as if you're about to say spy or spare. Spy. And eventually, even though you make the shape of an S with your mouth, you don't actually make any sound. Bye. It's a little bit like having to do a run-up before doing the long jump. You can't just launch yourself. You have to get yourself into the right position. The same thing with your mouth. If you start off by putting your lips and your tongue in the position of an S, and then follow that with a P sound, you will automatically make the correct sound. Bye. Notice there's no air coming out of your mouth. It's not the same sound as the P in pie. If you put your hand in front of your mouth, you will feel air coming out of your mouth in a little puff when you say pie. But if you say the word spy, you might feel the air coming out for the S, but you shouldn't feel any air when pronouncing the P sound. Spa, pie. This letter is a cackling old witch who decides to go out for a walk. The sound of this letter is simply k, as in cackle. She's a cackling old witch, so this is a female letter. Watch out for this curl over here. This is the curl of her neck, and this helps you to identify that this is the cackling old witch. There are other letters that look similar, but so long as you can see this curl here and the gatepost, you'll remember that it is the cackling old witch. This is a cockerel, or a male chicken, and it has the same kind of sound as the b in spy. If you say sky, then the k sound that you make inside the word sky is in fact the correct sound. So think of a chicken, a male chicken, trying to fly in the sky, g. Same thing as before, if you put your hand in front of your mouth, you shouldn't feel any air coming out when you pronounce the sound. It's not the same sound as the K in kite. Put your hand in front of your mouth and feel the air coming out of kite as opposed to no air coming out when you say sky. G. Pause the video at this point and see if you can remember these four letters. Doesn't matter if you can't remember the sex at this stage, just focus on seeing the shape of the letter and remembering what the sound is. This is a tantric turtle. It's a ladyboy. One thing about ladyboys is that they're very much into fetish. They love sexual activities. They're out partying all night. They're a little bit sickly, very dodgy kind of people. Most of the consonants in the Thai alphabet are actually ladyboys. 
This letter looks a little bit like our N. So another way of remembering it is to think of a naughty tantric turtle. Notice the head as it peeks out of its shell. And there's the shell over there. This is the T sound. Here's another ladyboy and he's meditating. See the head over here? and wrapped around his waist is his leg and the leg is coming up trying to get round the back of his neck as in a yoga position and he's trying to meditate so this is the mm sound as in meditate these are two ladyboys they're into s and m this one over here is the sadist and this one here is the masochist who is probably suspended from the ceiling. And this one likes to stomp on the masochist's hand with nail boots. The N sound as in nail boots. Now notice the difference between this letter and the preceding letter, the meditating ladyboy. See over here the loop is on the left hand side. It's just one ladyboy as opposed to this one, the loop is on the right hand side. This is two ladyboys, one standing up and the other one upside down. Another way you could look at the shape of this letter is it looks a little bit like 96. And again, because ladyboys like to do things in reverse, they don't like 69, they like to do things 96, very naughty. So it doesn't really matter how you remember this letter, it's the N as in nail boots or 96 the loop is on the right hand side for the M the loop is on the left hand side and another way of distinguishing between these two in the English alphabet the M comes before N so the M has the loop on the left hand side while the N has the loop on the right hand side if you visualize this as being one ladyboy meditating and notice that over here you've got two ladyboys, one up, one down, in the 96 position with the nail boots. Pause the video and see if you can remember what these letters are. Focus on seeing the shape of the letter and remembering what the picture was. And once you remember the picture, then try to link that to the sound of the letter. If you can, try to think of what the sex is, but it doesn't matter if you can't remember that for now. Here's another ladyboy letter. This one is carrying a cactus. So it's a k sound as in carry. It's important to watch for which way the head is facing. If the head is facing outwards, is carrying a cactus. This letter has a very similar shape. It's an Indian male fakir or distortionist who is doubled over on himself. Now the important thing to watch out for to distinguish this letter from the preceding letter is to pay attention to which way the head is facing. If he's facing up, he's looking at his dangly bits as opposed to this letter where the head is facing downwards because of the heavy load that he's carrying. Here he's looking up at his dangly bits, d or d for doubled over or dangly bits, and k as in carry cactus. Now after a long while his stomach starts to sag. So this is the t sound after an s as in stomach. Same thing as before with the sky and the spy. Start off by making an s sound and then say the t and then practice removing the S, but still continue to make the shape of an S in your mouth. Just don't sound it out. Sta. Pause the video and see if you can remember all these letters. Moving on, another ladyboy. This one likes to stand on his or her head upside down and wiggle or wave his legs. And this is the sound W, as in wave. Now, even though this letter is a consonant, it can sometimes be used as a vowel, in which case it is the ua sound. Let's show you a quick example of this before moving on. Do you remember this letter? 
it's the cackling old witch so it's the k sound and then we follow it with the waving ladyboy and then we end this word with the doubled over indian fakir the d sound so together it makes the sound k ua d kuat which means a bottle there is something very important to know about how words are ended in thai thai people do not enunciate the final consonant in a word they do not actually enunciate the d as we would in the word quad for instance notice that i said quad i made a forceful sound when i pronounced the d but in thai what happens is that you make the shape of the sound as if you're about to pronounce it and then you simply stop as if you're being strangled and trying to get the sound out i call this principle shaken but not stirred so the word is kuad not kuad kuad you might be able to hear the sound stopping on the d but you won't actually hear the d being enunciated kuad this is actually the same lady boy who gets tired of standing on his head all day and he decides to go out so he decides to roll on his head down the hill and it's the r sound as in roll now lady boys love to go out at night time so at the end of the day at the end of a syllable this becomes an n sound you'll see this in words like ahan which is spelt with an r at the end it's not ahar it's ahan which means food this is a ladyboy squirrel it's the l sound as in squirrel and he likes to lick his nuts he's a bit of a vampire ladyboy squirrel he likes to go out at night and watch movies like the rocky horror picture show and the same thing with this letter normally it's an l sound but at the end of a syllable it becomes an n sound usually you'll notice this in english words like centran for central or bin for bill but there are plenty of thai words that end in this letter and you pronounce this as an n sound at the end otherwise it is an l sound as in a squirrel licking his nuts remember the old u-boat sea captain well he arrived on an island somewhere in thailand and he decided to sit on a ledge and chew his tobacco this is a slightly tricky letter for us as we don't really have the sound in english some people pronounce it like the letter j but actually the j sound does not exist in thai at all it is more like the ch sound in chew where you swallow the sound in your mouth like chewing tobacco chu it's not the same as ch as in cheer and the way to tell if you're pronouncing this sound correctly is to put your hand in front of your mouth there should be no air coming out if you say cheer you can feel the air coming out but if you say chu and keep the air inside your mouth then you are more likely to make the correct sound ch there's a famous weekend market in bangkok called chatujak it's not pronounced jatujak or jatujak it's pronounced chatu chak you have to be very careful to keep the air inside your mouth and be careful not to make any voice sounds with your vocal cords avoid making the j sound it's not jatu chak it's chatu chak the sound seems to come from the front of your mouth not the back of your throat ch as in chew chewing tobacco you'll hear this in words like jai which means to pay jai bin is to pay the bill and if you say chai then that actually means to use something but if you say jai there's a good chance that you won't be understood most lady boys are quite clumsy and can't play any kind of sports at all and they also tend to be upside down a lot of the time this one is right way up and he's diving so it's the ng sound as in diving notice he's doing a jackknife dive it's relatively easy for us to make the sound if it is in the middle or the end of a word as in ringing 
but there are a lot of words in Thai that begin with this sound, as in the word for snake, which is ngu, or the word for work, which is ngan. And the way to practice that is to add a vowel before you say the ng sound. So something like angu, which eventually becomes angu, and then ngu. Same thing for ngan. Start off by saying something like angan, and then try not to make any sound. Angan, ngan. Another thing that helps is to linger on the sound before continuing with the word. So, ngu, ngan. These two ladyboys are like old housewives standing and yakking across the fence to each other. Notice the squarish jaw. Most ladyboys tend to be quite masculine after all. And look for the fleshy lips, squarish jaw and the eye. This letter is exactly like the Y in English. It can sometimes be used as a vowel also. As a consonant, it is the Y sound, as in yellow. But as a vowel, it could be the I, as in sky, or the E sound, as in jelly. Pause the video here and see if you can recognize all the characters so far. Here's a ladyboy trying to keep fit. He's at the gym and he's doing his push-ups. You can see here is the mirror of the gym and he's pushing against the mirror. So it's the P sound as in push. Here's another letter that's exactly the same sound. The only difference is that it's a girl doing her push-ups. There's a couple of differences in these letters that help you to distinguish between a ladyboy P. Ladyboys are exhibitionistic. This ladyboy is looking around to see who's watching him, as opposed to girls are quite vain. She's looking at herself in the mirror to make sure that her makeup is on right. The other thing is that ladyboys tend to have much longer legs. So notice that the knees of the ladyboy is much higher than the girl. These sounds are identical. The only difference is that the tones will change depending on whether the word has a ladyboy p or a girl p. Notice there's a balloon tied to his toe. This is the F sound, the sound that you make when you blow up a balloon. <sighs> Again, there are two Fs. One is a ladyboy F looking around to see who's watching him. And the other one is a girl F looking at herself in the mirror and she has shorter legs. These letters are all the same. They're all the S sound. The first letter looks a little bit like the squirrel. This letter looks a little bit like the ladyboy carrying a cactus. And this letter looks like the U-boat captain. In all these letters, something is sticking out. So it's the S sound, as in sticking out. And they're all girls, because girls love to stick things in their hair. They're all identical, but they're not interchangeable. It's just like the C and S in English. And of course you can have two words that sound exactly the same, but have different meanings. Like the word cell. If you spell it with a C, it means one thing. But if you spell it with an S, it means something else. Pause the video and see if you can recognize all these letters. This is a very common multi-purpose letter and can be a little bit confusing until you've understood it fully. Remember the U-boat captain? Well, he's looking out of the porthole at the beautiful scenery outside. He is completely speechless in awe at the beautiful scenery. It's more like the American way of pronouncing R than the British way. This letter can be either a consonant or a vowel. If it's a consonant, it makes no sound at all and takes on the sound of the vowel. But if it is a vowel, it makes the sound R. It actually has another function as well, but we'll deal with that later. 
This letter is also a multifunction letter. It can either be the H sound. It looks like an H and it sounds like an H. It's the H as in humpback girl. It's a girl because she's carrying the baby. Usually it's the women who carry the babies in life. Notice it looks like either a capital H or it could look like a small H with a little loop or sometimes a dash at the top. So it's the H as in humpback lady. Now the other function that this letter can have is as a sex change doctor. In this case it makes no sound at all. All it does is it changes the sex of a ladyboy into a girl. Snip, 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 snip. Changing the sex of a ladyboy into a girl doesn't change the sound of the ladyboy letter. All it does is change the tone of the word. And we'll deal with that when we come to the tones at the end of the course. So as a consonant, it is simply the H sound. Otherwise, it's a sex change doctor for changing ladyboys into girls. This character is a roll of tape that sits on top of a consonant to silence it. You'll tend to see it in foreign derived words. It's simply a device to show the original spelling of the word in the foreign language and to tell you not to pronounce the letter. Here are some examples. The first word is chicken with the ah vowel. And here's the rolling ladyboy, but it's silenced. Then we've got the sagging stomach. And underneath here is the oo vowel. And then the 96 nail boots. So it's ga, you don't pronounce the r, ga toon, which is a cartoon. The next word is gi ba. Ignore this little character at the moment. It's a tone mark. You don't pronounce the R at the end. You just say Gita. And the final example, you have the I vowel on the left hand side, but you pronounce the chicken first, so it becomes Gai. And this doubled over Fakir is actually not pronounced Gai, but it comes from the English word Guide. The little roll on the tape is telling you not to pronounce the D, not to say Guide but simply to say guy. It's not that Thais are mispronouncing the English words. It's spelled that way. 